Hi, John Clements, and I'm down here at the Dickinson Family Education Conservatory, and I'm with probably the most famous plant in the world over the last couple of weeks. It's been published all around the world. I had friends in England telling me they saw news about this plant. A lot of people have had lots of questions about what do you do with one of these? Now, it's a plant from the tropics, it's from Sumatra, and so people ask, can they grow this plant at home? Sure you can, as long as you give it plenty of light. As you can see in the conservatory here, it's almost in bright, bright full sun part of the day. It gets dappled light much of the other parts of the day, but you would need a very, very bright place. This is also from Sumatra, so it never gets below about 65 degrees in the tropics in Sumatra. So if you can give it very warm nighttime temperatures, usually not any colder than about 60 degrees, yes, you could grow this in the house. Uh, you can obtain them. They're available online at certain sources. You can get a bulb of one of these for a few hundred dollars. But you have to be very, very patient because from a small bulb, this plant will take about 10 years for you to bloom it out. And so during that time, you have to take care of it. It has to be put into a larger pot over a succession of time and you need to baby it. So the neat thing about this plant too is it is easy to grow as long as you give it what it needs. It has a dormant period and so at about four months of the year, it doesn't do anything. So you wanna cut back on your water. You wanna not feed it during those times. Let it go into rest so it puts all the energy back into that bulb. Then when it begins to emerge, then begin to feed it, give it the nutrients and the fertilizer that it needs. People have asked, can you eat the seed from one of these? No, you cannot. They are poisonous to humans. Uh, the Arum family is interesting in that there are some things in that family that you can eat. We have the Monstera deliciosa. Even that name tells you the fruit on a Monstera is edible, but other fruits in that family, in the Arum family, are not. This is one that isn't. So uh, in the tropics, in Sumatra, it is consumed by rhinoceros hornbills, but don't you try to eat it. Uh, it does like to have a very well-draining mix. And so we have it in a combination of pumice and sand and shavings. I give it a little bit of azomite, which also gives it a lot of needed minerals that it doesn't get from just a standard potting mix. Uh, we give it a, a slow release fertilizer, and then occasionally we will augment that with other things that it needs during the extreme growth period. So. That said, We're could you one raise of one of these at home? Sure you could, as long as you I'd give like it the right conditions. flowering cycle. These plants, Morphophallus titanum or corpse plant, will bloom for about 48 hours and the process involves this ruffled or colorful spathe opening up and the spadix, that central yellow part, uh, that can be about 10 feet tall. The spathe can be about six feet across. So these are massive, massive inflorescences. But where the flowers are found is actually at the base of that yellow spadix, which we can't see them even when the spathe is completely open. There will be a ring of female flowers at the base and then a ring of male flowers above that, and they mature at different times. The smell has been described in a lot of different ways. We heard here that it was musty, like gym socks, dirty locker room, garbage truck, and also dirty diapers. But the insects will detect this as a rotten animal and come to feed and ideally also mate and carry pollen around from plant to plant. The spadix will heat up on night number one and carry these compounds far and wide, attracting pollinators. And they come thinking that there is a dead animal to feast on and for some mating. They'll climb inside the flower and ideally they'll have some pollen from another plant that they then spread around the female flowers. The female flowers are receptive on night number one, so they're ready to receive pollen grains, but the pollen on the same plant is not mature until night number two. And this helps to make sure that the pollen from the same plant doesn't pollinate itself. And this ensures some genetic diversity. So we're relying on pollinators to spread the pollen around from plant to plant. So night number two, the pollen is being shed from the male flowers and that's carried on the pollinators to other plants. Here we don't have any of those pollinators present and it's an enclosed system. So what we do is we cut a little window in the back of the spathe and that allows us access to see and hand pollinate the flowers. So we take pollen from another plant and put it on the receptive flowers on night number one, hoping to ensure some pollination. 
So the spathe remains open for about 48 hours, after which it starts to close up and eventually the spadix will fall over. But ideally, those flowers have been pollinated and the seed is developing at the very base of the spadix, in which case that will continue to mature for the next few months. When you look at the corpse flower, um, I remember when I first looked at this for the first time before I knew much about plants and I thought, wow, that kind of looks like a giant calla lily from hell, right? And um, you know, that impulse wasn't actually off by very much because believe it or not, this is a calla lily and they are related. And the anatomy is quite similar. And it's also quite similar to a number of flowers that you might also know. So we have, for example, some peace lilies here. On the, on the right here is just the species, and then on the left is a really interesting cultivar with this variegated spathe there. It's also related to anthuriums, and I have three anthuriums here. So this, you might think of the one on the left here as when you think of an anthurium, this large, large spathe. Um, but then this is also an anthurium here. So there's quite a range in them. And the anatomy is really, really similar. So when this opens up, we're actually going to have this large spadix, and that's this part. And then these sort of ruffles are essentially this part, which is the spathe. One main difference is that the flowers here, are, um, we have a ring of male flowers on the corpse flower and the ring of female flowers underneath. Whereas these flowers, each one of these little nubbins is a whole flower that has both male and female parts. So there is a little bit of difference between like an anthurium and an amorphophallus. However, if you really thought like, oh my gosh, this kind of looks like something I know, it's because it is. Um, another flower that's, rela that's related is Monstera. You might not know that the Monstera deliciosa that everyone grows as a house plant, it's also related. And in fact, we've surrounded the flower by all sorts of relatives that might, you might not know. So the dumb cane and the pothos and the philodendrons and everything that's here, including the elephant ears, come and see them because they're all closely related. How many are there? Well, in the wild, in Sumatra, it's estimated that there are about a thousand plants left. And that's not too many. And it's really the major losses to the Amorphophallus titanum in its native habitat is through loss to forestry, to palm oil plantations, and coffee. I love my Sumatran coffee, but it does cut into the natural habitat that these plants have lived in for a long time. In the United States, according to the Missouri Botanic Garden, there are about 100 of these plants that are blooming size. And as of 2000, the documentation is there were 40 blooming events in the entire country. So when we have a Amorphophallus titanum bloom, it is a rare event and it is something extremely special. And so um, there are more and we're pollinating them and we're trying more and more to produce more of these plants and also attempting to make sure that we keep the gene a pool large and by selective breeding and making sure we don't have inbred plants.